Good day, everyone. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. Um, another video on um, high frequency ventilation. Okay, so uh, I talked a little bit on the last video about augmented diffusion, um, about my thoughts of, of co convective dispersion and interregional gas mixing or the Pendeleff mechanisms. Um, now, what I'd really like to dive into uh, are the, um, the the Kind of the uh, the remaining two uh, theories, the um, the axile and radial augmented dispersion, or also known as Taylor dispersion, um, and the uh, bulk axile flow mechanisms. And the reason that we we hypothesize that these may um, these may be uh, valid methods for explaining what's going on is um, we we found that when we put somebody on high frequency ventilation sometimes their pH would get really low and their carbon dioxide would get very high and, and, and obviously this intuitively makes sense because you know, I have very small gas volumes moving out and I'm not I'm not quote unquote blowing off carbon dioxide like I would in a um, in a normal patient or a, a traditional or conventional uh, ventilator strategy um, however what they found, not not me, but this is this is found, you know, a couple decades before um, I I was in and got into medicine, um, because high frequency ventilation has actually been around for a while. This is nothing new. Um, what we found is that if we deflated the endotracheal tube cuff and allowed for a leak, that um, the carbon dioxide would decrease and the pH would increase, and this was rather significant. We we'd see a rather significant change, and in fact, this is still done to this very day. That if we have CO2 issues, you may find them um, actually intentionally inducing a cuff leak um, on the endotracheal tube. So, how in the heck, how in the heck is that working? What is going on here? And this is kind of where the um, axile and radial augmented diffusion or Taylor dispersion, augmented dispersion, excuse me, and the bulk axile flow kind of kind of comes in into play. So what what the what what we can do is we can model, and I'll do a qualitative model because the mathematics of this this stuff um, involves the the probably the Navier Stokes um, equations of fluid mechanics, and these are very a uh, very complicated um, uh, partial differential equations, and they're uh, the probably second order uh, differential uh, equations. And um, uh, <laughs> I'm not exactly a um, I'm not exactly a pro at calculus, uh, so it would be an exercise in futility. And I think a qualitative picture um, can adequately explain it, at least at the, at the level that I, I want to uh, convey. So if you can imagine, boy, I'm going to try to draw this, so just bear with me here. Here we have our respiratory tract, and um, we're actually looking at, uh, that's pretty bad, but we're actually looking at the uh, carina, the trachea, the right and left main stem bronchus there. And imagine, if you will, that I have an endotracheal tube in the patient, and I have the cuff deflated. We'll model this as a cuff deflated. What we think is going on and I'll draw, let's draw the oxygen blue here, okay? Is As we're delivering oxygen, we have axile flow um, as the oxygen is being delivered. So I have delivery of the oxygen, and the oxygen is moving this way. And it's more or less laminar, uh, laminar. Um, you know, nothing's perfectly laminar in the airway tract, but um, this more or less, I have laminar flow occurring more or less down the middle of the respiratory tract. Okay, so the blue is my O2. And then what we have is we have, I'll draw carbon dioxide orange and see if I can do this. We have um, more or less turbulent flow along the walls of the lining of the airway, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that uh, probably the Kawanda effect um, plays is, is, is significant here, and um, uh, the viscous viscosity, of, you know, obviously Reynolds number and all that will play a big role, but kind of along um, the outer edges of the the airway. So I, in the middle, I have uh, my my oxygen flowing in blue. Is I have carbon dioxide kind of moving up like this, and I'll draw it here, 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 okay, and then the carbon dioxide is going to move up here, here, behind around, behind, and eventually out, like that. 
Um, so what I have is I have um, in the center here, I have my oxygen being delivered down into the lower airways. Okay, so I have the delivery as the gas goes in, and then the gas coming out is um, on is is not in the center, but it's actually around the the outer edges of the airway, um, coming out the more or less turbulent flow, kind of spiraling its way out of the airway. And if we model, and this is actually um, this is this is direct, this is actually what we see with. Um, something like a Taylor dispersion and um, bulk axile flow as I have you know different components I have axile and radial um, flow occurring at, at the same time with my you know more my axile flow in the, in the center my radial flow on the outside um, but if we model it like this that explains how I am able to decrease my carbon dioxide with a deflated endotracheal tube um, cuff because the carbon dioxide is able is, is along the the you know the inner part the lining of the airway and it is able to kind of just attach to the wall and more or less turbulently work its way up and out of the airways whereas in the center of the air column I have oxygen um, flowing so if you were to look at maybe a uh, a cross section of the airway see if I can draw this I'm still trying to get uh, basically using my fingers to draw um, with this program so my art isn't my art isn't great on a good day um, so basically what we have is if you can imagine um, with more or less laminar flow okay if you can imagine that's kind of like the tip of an arrow and it's coming out towards you um, that would be the flow of oxygen through the airway and then um, you know in the center and it's more or less laminar, and then more, and then rather turbulently, um, I have carbon dioxide moving uh, on the periphery of that, and it is more or less kind of a kind of this turbulent flow that's moving up. So turbulent um, on the outside, and then on the inner inner lumen, have the oxygen moving. And if we use this model, we can at least explain how deflating endotracheal tube cuff works. And this provides uh, some pretty good insight as to how I have at least bulk movement. This this explains bulk bulk movement um, um, at least in the upper airways. But I I still think that in the lower airways, when we talk about in the respiratory bronchial, the respiratory duct, and the alveoli, um, I, I I'm I'm not convinced that the bulk mechanism works. Um, I don't think it's bulk uh, so much as it's it's a molecular diffusion. I, I think diffusion probably plays the biggest role when we get at, to the level of the alveoli. Um, and actually, uh, there's a uh, one of the um, channels that I subscribe to is um, the uh, Sunny USF. Uh, I believe it's a university um, on the East Coast of New York. And there's a, a playlist called The Physics of Life, and you guys can look that up. And um, Dr. Scott Turner, just did, who's a biologist, um, did a study of termite mounds, and he modeled them on um, human lungs, modeled termite mounds on, on, on human lungs, and found out that, um, in fact, how air gets in and out of a termite mound is, is somewhat similar to what occurs in the lungs, and it is not necessarily a bulk me flow mechanism that you'd think of. And there's actually a lot of um, um, basically diffusion that occurs um, at the fundamental um, levels. Uh, I thought that was a real interesting uh, video. You guys are definitely welcome to watch it and give it some some thumbs up. But anyway, that's that's my hypothesis. I don't say that I'm not necessarily right. I'm certainly not an expert on all things respiratory physiology. But I do think that I have these. I do. I do believe, if I could sum this up, that um, in the, the larger airways we have these bulk mechanisms working, axile flow, Taylor dispersion, um, convective dispersion, and then as we get down to the lower airways we have things like interregional gas mixing, the pendulum mechanism, and um, augmented diffusion occurring. Um, so that is my hypothesis, and uh, hopefully uh, that helps you guys understand this rather confusing modality. As always, thanks for hanging in there.